Hanukkah candles. Someone wanted to know, but the whole thing is, is olive oil preferable or not? So last year I pointed out that Alpi Kabbalah it is, but Iker Adin, it's not. Let's discuss this from the beginning. Bamed Malikin is uh, the 20th daf of Shabbos. It begins the, the parak. As you guys know, what does Bamed Malikin talk about? It talks about what kind of oils and wicks you're supposed to use for Shabbos candles. And Shabbos candles are meant for quality of light. Why? Because you need Shabbos candles. It's a kavod ve'oneg. Uh, sorry, Shabbos ve'zachar kavod ve'oneg. It's for a practical reason. That's why you have Shabbos candles. And you're supposed to technically use the Shabbos candles. They're meant for living. So you need good wicks and good oils. And why is olive oil, for, oil, olive oil preferred for Shabbos candles? Because of all the usual oils, it was the best. But basically, assuming what you had back in the year zero, if there was a year zero, no, there wasn't a coin. By the way, uh, let's go to uh, the days of Rabbi Udonasi, the late second century. So in his time, the best oil you could get was olive oil, and that was good. On Daf Kuf Aleph, uh, Kuf Aleph Lamed Aleph, uh, right at the bottom, Rav Huna applies the same standards to the Hanukkah candles. Uh, and he, why? He explains. Because, that is the same sh- standards for Shabbos uh, wicks and oils, because he assumes there that the Hanukkah candles are also meant for practical use, but we don't hold that way. Uh, therefore, uh, he says, they must be the best quality. Uh, unless someone come to start adjusting them, just like on Shabbos, why do you use good quality so you don't have to tinker with the lights on Shabbos? You light your candles and just let them go and enjoy them. Uh, by the way, uh, there, uh, I, I looked in the Steinzels behind me here. He says, he uses my word, Minorat Hanukkah. I've pointed out many times the word Hanukkiah is a foreign word. It's not right, it's not traditional. And there he refers to the Hanukkah lamp as Minorat ha- ha- Hanukkah, the Minorat Hanukkah. And I like that better. Or Minorah Hanukkah but not Hanukkah. By the way, so it's good that Rav Steinzels and I think alike. Uh, Rav Chista has another opinion. He says you could use the subpar oils and wicks on the weekdays of Hanukkah, because indeed you're not using using them. But the Shabbos of Hanukkah, your wicks and oils for your Hanukkah lamp have to have the same Shabbos standards. And the third opinion is Rabbi Zera says in the name of Rav Matan, or they say in the name of Rav, that subpar oils and wicks, you could use them all Hanukkah because you're not responsible for the Hanukkah likes if they go out. It's not meant to be used anyways. This is the opinion that's accepted by the Allah. That is, for Hanukkah, the point is that the not the quality of the light because the light is just for show. As a matter of fact, uh, that's where the whole idea of the Shamish comes from. If you have uh, your candle there, your Hanukkah lamp, to show that you're not using it for its light, have another one just there to actually give light. And that's the Allah the Gemara continues, Rav Yirmi accepted this halacha, and Abaye accepted this halacha when he heard in Rabbi Yochanan's name. Abaye accepted this as the halacha in Rabbi Yochanan's name. I wanted to point out because apparently Abaye was two years old when Rabbi Yochanan died. Rabbi Yochanan died at the age of 99, apparently. A very long, productive life. And Abaye didn't be, learn any Torah directly from him. He just heard Shmuas from, from, uh, from Rabbi Yochanan. Either way, the point is that inferior oils and wicks may be used on Hanukkah, and that's, by the way, what you'll find explicitly in, let's say, the Mishnah Torah and the Shulchan Aruch, just the Shulchan Aruch without the Ramah. So where does the idea of using olive oil specifically for, for Hanukkah come from? Aside from later ideas that, well, that's the Hanukkah miracle happened with olive oil in the temple, so you should use olive oil also. We find uh, on uh, Kaf, Kaf Gimel Amun Aleph, uh, Rav, uh, Rabbi Shua ben Levi says a line that's sort of ambiguous. Right in the middle there he says, all the oils are fine for the lamp, but olive oil is the choicest. And there it's sort of ambiguous. Haner, the lamp. Abaye then says that he used to light with sesame oil. And he changed his practice when he heard about what Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said, that you should use olive oil. So there the Tosafos point out that the previous teaching was talking about Hanukkah. And the next thing in the Gemara is talking about Hanukkah. And it must be the lamp in question here is the Hanukkah lamp. That they're talking about the Hanukkah lamp. The best thing to use is olive oil. And that the Chiddush here is, well... My, what's the Kiddush of this? Is that even on Hanukkah, olive oil is the best because we already know that the olive oil is best for Shabbos. So that's an assumption that they make. And therefore, if we're hearing now that olive oil is the best for the Nair, it must be best for Hanukkah. <clears throat> the post however, let's say the, the tradition of the Shulchan Aruch, the Rif, the Rush, the Rambam, all those can form who don't mention olive oil as being better for Hanukkah. Uh, remember the previous discussion that we just saw before on Kaf Aleph, that the ruling was, even accepted by Abaye, that all the oils are kosher. All the oils and wicks are kosher. 
uh, and because quality doesn't matter. Quality doesn't matter on Hanukkah. Uh, let's see what else here. And that the lamp in question is the Shabbos lamp. It's best to use olive oil for Shabbos. And up until this point, we haven't found an assumption that olive oil is the best for Shabbos. Uh, it's also implied that if one were to find a superior oil wick, that should be used for Shabbos, like, uh, let's say, paraffin. The Gemara is basically saying that for Shabbos, because the point is to get the highest quality, use the best quality. Now, already, olive oil was burning clean in the olden days, but even then there was some soot and some smoke. Uh, eventually, people found tallow. Tallow is a way of uh, rendering animal fat and creating candle out of that. That's already something that in Europe they started using a lot more. And uh, eventually, we started using hydrocarbons, petroleum-based hydrocarbons, what we get out of the ground. So that's basically paraffin. All the candles you see around now, they're not made from animal fat, and they're not made from beeswax. They're made from paraffin, which is uh, hydrocarbons that burn mostly clean, by the way. Uh, the, the best, let's say, natural gas, like uh, methanes and butanes, the stuff you have in your stove. So those, when burning clean, are only supposed to produce carbon dioxide and water. No carbon monoxide, no soot, no smoke. Here's the test. Find where the lady of the house is lighting her Shabbos candles. Uh, take our house, for example. The women who are using, let's say, olive oil, you'll see that there's soot on the ceiling above and uh, also against the wall. They have to clean it. Even if you're using olive oil, it ends up clean. Or if you're lighting your menorah, your menorat Hanukkah, in a nice glass box outside your house, like tonight, and you regularly use olive oil, you'll see that you'll have to clean the box. You'll have to clean the menorah. There's a lot of soot and a lot of impurities in there. But if you've only been burning paraffinic wax, you don't have to clean the thing. The glass is still clean. Yeah, maybe some of it melted and stuck to the bottom, but the glass is clean, assuming you you know, you know didn't close up the holes so it had enough oxygen to burn, and uh, that would be technically superior. So uh, to conclude, it seems from the straight poskim until the tosfis that there is no hakpada to use specifically olive oil for lighting the Hanukkah candles. The Rokeach is the one that they attribute this, who, based on Tosfo, said that, yes, all the oils and wicks that you use on Hanukkah are kosher, but olive oil is superior. He's the first one, apparently saying it based on this Tosfo. But this Tosfo's understanding of this line, Haner, is far from unanimous.